you like this video, make sure to visit our Vimeo page and follow us to get the latest update. Hey Sirisha, can you hear us? Uh -huh, yes. Uh, so I think we are just on time and considering, uh, you know, the time timelines and everything, let's get started. So probably initially what I'll do is, you know, talk more about, uh, you know, the approach of the training. Uh, I hope you have seen my trainer profile as well. So in terms of industry experience, uh, uh, I carry more than 10 plus years of experience in both SAP, HCM and Workday side of things. Uh, specific to Workday, uh, I would say worked on multiple international client implement implementations. Uh, not just one module, I think uh, the, the expansion from an expansion point of view started with HCM, which you already know is the core part of things, and then worked on multiple areas, including time tracking, absence, compensation, recruiting, uh, payroll as well. So like you have, you must have seen Workday being a very connected system. These all modules talk to each other. Uh, so during the training as well, I'll talk a lot of connection points as well, uh, where, you know, you will understand how different modules talk to each other. So that would be my objective, the training. And I believe in terms of my, one of the key things, which I expect from the training, uh, you know, from the other side is, you know, you should be, you know, very much open about any questions, which you have, you should understand things, you know, you can always, you know, cross question and understand or ask questions so that, you know, it becomes a good value add for you as well. So that's pretty much my introduction in terms of, uh, you know, overall uh, training delivery as well as, uh, you know, experience. Apart from that, within the training, what we have is, you know, very specific targeted approach on the time tracking side, right? So we'll initially, at least in the today's session, we'll talk about a lot of basics and everything, but uh, we can talk more once the intro part is over. Uh, on the work day side of things, Sirisha, how much do you know? Do you know HCM or do you have any basics on that? Because accordingly, I'll probably drive the discussion accordingly, right? So that it will be helpful for you. So are you aware of any specific modules in Workday right now? Or you are just learning time tracking for the first time? I'm a little familiar with the Workday screens. Okay. Um, and uh, I work with like SAP and Workday integration. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, so that part I'm aware and a little bit of uh, the screens, but not like, you know, much like in the back end. No worries, no worries. We'll talk about everything end to end. Uh, all right. I think we can get started right now with the training let me share my screen and then we can you know probably talk about each and everything once uh so i i hope that you already have the access to the in you know the material provided on the lms right so we'll be talking mm -hmm. about that and uh, you know in the future sessions uh we'll talk more about the you know hands-on on the tenant side of things as well so let me share my screen and let me know if you can view it or not. You can see the screen now? Yes, yes, we can see. Awesome, awesome. Let me put it on a slideshow mode as well, which would be helpful. Uh, let me drag it here. For some reason, my Zoom is kind of, you know, in between uh, going, uh, you know, crashing, but uh, hope you guys can see the screen and, uh, you know, listen to me carefully as well. Like you, you there's no lag in between, right? Yeah, there's no lag. Oh, there. awesome. And uh, this recording sessions will be shared, right? Yes, that's correct. So you will have uh, all the recordings as well. Uh, same thing. I think I'm sure uh, Zarentech has uh, already, you know, uh, we have the support team already provided the links as well. And I can uh, walk you through as well about that. So the meetings are recording recorded for your benefit only. You know, if you want, oh. you can go through. But like I said, right, I want uh, your, uh, I would say, attention in terms of, you know, the live meeting only because that's the main objective, right? right? So that you understand. Right. 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 All right. Uh, so workday, uh, workday time tracking, I would say within all the modules uh, is one of the key modules. The reason being, you know, this module is kind of very much interconnected to payroll side of things. A lot of companies use, uh, you know, workday time tracking because of multiple aspects. Uh, the key aspects would be, you know, how do you manage the employee time? which is very much known, you know, obviously it is very straightforward that time tracking would be used for, uh, you know, managing employee time, but within the time tracking side of things, there are other aspects as well, which are, you know, assigning different schedules, uh, you know, tracking time, managing absences and payroll side of things. 
So let's jump on to the slides and then we can talk more about it because you know you should probably understand how exactly it works from a time tracking perspective. Uh, but before that, there are certain uh, disclaimers and certain uh, policies which we wanted to cover as well. Uh, you know these uh, these slides, examples, and the content is you know very much for information only. Obviously, uh, this is obviously copyrighted by Zaren Tech. You know these are very specific time tracking modules. Uh, you know, obviously you should, you know, on the legal side of things, obviously it should not be transmitted in any means. And, you know, uh, you know, there are certain images, obviously, which are open source or, you know, certain images we are which are copyrighted as well. So just wanted to share that disclaimer as well to you. All right. Now, before we talk about, you know, overall, uh, you know, key things for today, I think uh, first session, which uh, Pushpa and I wanted to cover is more on the, you know, the introduction part of things, we want to take a lot of time to give you more understanding of the module. Reason being, uh, from your experience, what I understand is you have certain amount of uh, knowledge in terms of, you know, interaction part of things. Uh, but uh, obviously, you know, within the module, there could be certain areas which, which are, you know, very much specific. So we'll talk about that, not just limited to the slides. We'll talk in general, the industry experience part of things as well uh, to you. Okay. And in terms of introduction, we will talk about multiple aspects that what are the benefits and, you know, what are the key areas are there within time tracking, uh, you know, especially on the workday side of things uh, that how exactly it talks to different modules, then, you know, we will talk a little bit about, you know, the next three items, which are, you know, more on the hands on side, but we'll tell, you know, how, how to approach it, you know, what should you be thinking if someone to, tells you, you know, that you have to set up time tracking or you have to, you know, change certain time code groups or you have to, you know, uh, make sure the time entry setup is being corrected, you know, so. I would be talking about each and everything in detail from two aspects as well. One is obviously, you know, vanilla config, you know, very uh, straightforward. How do you build things? And second one would be more on the correction side of things as well. So in the upcoming sessions, we'll talk more about that. Uh, but uh, today, the ses session would be more on the intro and, you know, the basic side of things. All right. hope you can see the next slide as well uh and if you have any questions in between Siresha, you can you can uh, you know jump in in between uh all right yeah, sure. awesome yeah workday time tracking obviously i think if you compare it with sap if you compare with a lot of uh, you know industry applications I think the one of the key things which workday time tracking is very strong in is you know how it is very much focused towards end user the ui part of things once we deep dive into things you'll understand it is very much focused towards the ease of access be it from the employee side of things you know uh, that how employee logs in uh, what are key features are there you know the ease of doing access those kind of areas so from a, from that perspective it is very much you know I would say consumer driven or the end user driven. So if you if you think of multiple participants uh, within HR technology system, right? There would be obviously end users who are actually logging the time, right? People working in shifts, people working in factories and everything, right? So to make things intuitive, I think workday time tracking is one of the key things. You know, it is very simple uh, UI, which is which is very easy to use. One of the key factors is that. Additionally, I think. Uh, from workday time tracking, the good part is, you know, how do we link the global policies? So a lot of modules have certain limitations to have, you know, the overall setup being done for a country from start to end, right? It requires more of an effort. So let me give you an example for that. You know, let's say, uh, I'm sure within the SAP side of things, right? There could be, uh, you know, let's say you are implementing it for one country, uh, let's say India, right? And uh, there are certain, uh, your company expands to China as well, right? Uh, and you have India and China. So a lot of components would be very much specific to India and China, right? Sometimes for SAP or be it uh, Oracle systems or success factors, right? The effort required is a lot in terms of doing things, you know, uh, a lot of setup or basic setup th uh, of things are replicated. But in workday time tracking, I would say a lot of uh, things can be used globally. So one of the key factors which which is easy to deploy is, you know, you can deploy workday time tracking comparatively faster, 
right so that is one of the things mm -hmm. okay. yeah because uh, if you compare with typical scp cycles right i'm i'm sure you must have seen uh, you know it requires a certain amount of changes in the spro then you know changing in the table side of things changing you know a lot on the ui sometimes as well on the ABAP side of things as well, you have to gen, you know, have some logics there. And then finally, that information is used by SAP payroll or you know, sent outside to a different vendor. Mm -hmm. But in case of Workday, I, I think the key advantage, which you will surely see is, you know, it's more faster in terms of, you know, customization, more, more faster in terms of integration and uh, more faster or more connected to multiple modules, right? You don't have to, you know, customize a lot of things uh, between, uh, you know, these modules, there are a lot of connections already built in as well. Uh, and, and let's talk about that, you know, before I move to the second topic, uh, second uh, pointer, right? Uh, imagine uh, an end user, right? Who uses company's payroll, obviously, he or she gets paid for that. A, and, you know, the person is using absence as well. The person is using time tracking as well you know, everything from all module perspective, right? So how one module talks to another is very different or very interconnected within Workday. For example, let's take a scenario that employee is, you know, taking a holiday, right? Employee is a time tracking user. Employee has to log in and log out, right? The person belongs to, you know, uh, the users who have to log in and log out, right? Then for them, how exactly these modules are connected, you know, that matters a lot. So let's say the person's work schedule, right? The person mm -hmm. is required to work from Monday to Friday, right? And let's say on, on a Friday, the person is, you know, saying, okay, uh, the person is, you know, applying a sick leave, right? What is the impact on the time tracking side of things? You know, how, how exactly he or she will be paid, right? That can be set at one time, you know, and that will follow. Uh, from that perspective, it won't be like that, you know, absence has to send information separately to payroll. You can build things to, you know, either be driven from time tracking side of things as well. So let mm -hmm. me give you a more example of that. A person can technically apply their time offs or absence from the time tracking side of things so that everything related to their presence and absence is sent from time tracking. Hope it is understandable, right, Sirisha? Uh, mm -hmm. you understood this one, right? So on the app, in the SCP side of things, right? You have, you know, certain areas of applying an absence, right? And certain screen to apply, you know, your, uh, you know, time, basically, you know, login and logout times. You can technically build workday time tracking to either receive the absence information directly or indirectly. And you can drive a lot of things either from workday time tracking as well. So person's absence information can be driven from time tracking side of things or from the absence module as well. So there are multiple ways of doing that. We'll talk more about it when, once we talk about in, in you know, future modules. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So how about the landscape? Like, you know, once you do customization, like similar to SAP, like we have like multiple landscapes for moving mm -hmm. changes. Sure. Uh, so let, let me talk about more on the intro side of Workday as well. I believe, okay. I think that that would be important for you. Reason being, you know, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, within, within SAP, right. You have a, you know, usually a gold system, right. Which is, you know, kind of the key config system. There is a production system. There is a quality system and, uh, you know, there are certain dev systems as well, right. From mm -hmm. there, you move your transport of the configuration from one tenant to another, right. I, on the SAP side of things, right. You use, uh, you know, STMS and underscore import and, you know, these kind of activities, which are, for, right. which are falling under SAP basis, you mm -hmm. perform a change and you move it uh, between uh, these areas. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. But within workday. So, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, deviating from the tap or topic, but this is important for you. Uh, we can take more time on the foundation side of things mm -hmm. within workday. Uh, you have different instances, right? So SAP is different from workday reason being, Workday is a SaaS application where everything, you know, you, ju you just need a browser with a link, with a login ID and password, and you can access. It is as good as Facebook or Instagram or any other website, right? As good, good as anything which can be run on an internet, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. 
So all the configuration side of things as well. So within SAP, you are using SAP application and use, using, you know, uh, uh, SPRO going to the, ten, uh, you know, going to the configuration, reaching out, you know, going through that application, SAP application, GUI, and then changing things within Workday, everything, whatever you do happens on the browser only. You would be able to access the configuration changes on the browser. You would be able to work as an end user on the browser. You'd be able to, you know, do a lot of things, you know, so everything is related to just the browser screen in terms of the functional part of things, Sirisha. If mm -hmm. you talk about integrations, integrations as well, to a majority of the extent falls under the browser, but there are certain uh, integrations like studio integrations, where you require a certain installation on top of, you know, the browser as well. So you have any questions on that, you know, I'll explain more about it. But before that, I want to know, you know, um, if you have any questions. No, I'm good. Thanks. Awesome. So there is in, in Workday, there is a production instance, which is the live system, right? Mm -hmm. Then there is something called a sandbox, which is mm -hmm. just a copy of production, which, which refreshes with the production information on a weekly basis, right? Mm -hmm. And there is a sandbox preview as well, which, which is more of, you know, so these are different instances or the copies of the system, right? So sandbox preview again is very much specific to Workday releases. So Workday as a product provide two different releases every year, right? With the new features and everything. So that falls under sandbox preview tenant. So tenant is no, nothing but just a copy, something like a quality, right? So it's just a copy of the original system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there are different implementation tenants and implementation tenants are nothing but, you know, your test environments where you develop the work and you move, or, you know, you test it out, right? Mm -hmm. Within the workday instances, right? Usually as someone who is doing the configuration, everything is intact. You know, all the modules are in the same area you know it's nothing like that you know that this instance is just for work day absence or this instance is just for up work day time tracking no everything would be interconnected and you know mm -hmm. as soon as you change things you know you can move from one tenant to another not using transport but using certain areas certain capabilities which are object transporters and you know solutions and all those things so we can talk more about that you know how do we migrate but yes. uh, but you know, uh, but very high level, I think this was the key thing which which I wanted to convey as well. You know, so just imagine Workday being a browser system, having mm -hmm. multiple instances, having you know uh, different copies of it. But obviously, anything moving to production, technically from a path perspective, should go via sandbox system. You know, it should ideally go via quality, usually in SAP side of things. Same ways we are, you know, expecting that if you follow the standard approach, it will go through the sandbox. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And sandbox is something which is very close to the production data, right? In the real world of things, you know, let's say you are facing some issue, some user is unable to access something. And obviously in production data, you don't have, you know, every access. So what is the closest system where you can check and troubleshoot, which is sandbox, right? It is. Mm -hmm refreshed on a weekly basis and you know uh, you can try out different things so sandbox is very critical in terms of your workday journey as well sirisha so okay. you have to you know make note of that that how important sandbox is right all right okay. uh, now moving moving ahead so within within i would say uh, time tracking right time tracking is very much interconnected to certain specific modules which are like really really close you cannot think of time tracking without that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the first one is Workday HCM. I think Workday HCM, again, it is simple as PA and OM on SAP. You know, all mm -hmm. the basic job profile data, all the basic eligibility information, all the basic, uh, you know, organization information, cost centers, job profiles, you know, anything on the basic level of things, company code, you know, everything end to end falls under HCM, mm -hmm. right? So HCM would be the core setup. So we, without HCM, you cannot implement time tracking. Number one, HCM mm -hmm. is the number one module, which has to be implemented, you know, so mm -hmm. HCM would have, you know, 
all the hcm is primarily on the human capital management about you know employee profile employee address employee uh, you know details about you know different transactions and everything like mm-hmm. you know person applying uh, you know any hiring transaction termination transaction any change of transaction anything related to usual hr stuff it's fall it falls under hcm so hcm is the key basic module which is anyways required for all the modules it is the mother of all modules actually so firstly mm-hmm. hcm should be there and within hcm and time tracking right it would be more on you know interconnection how exactly uh hcm and time tracking talk right so hcm mm-hmm. as a module is just think of it providing a lot of information about employee type right me mm-hmm. as an uh, employee as raj versus pushpa versus you right we belong to different locations different entities different areas our employee type can vary right you can be full time mm-hmm. i can be part time you know it can vary depending on cert depending on the job profiles as well you can be someone you know managing an operations team i can be someone who doesn't require using time tracking so all that information comes from it same Mm-hmm. right the core information about an employee comes from hcm the logic is built on the time tracking side right for example if someone is eligible for time tracking i know i am going deep on you know technicals but this is important for you to understand you know i can you know skip these parts and directly jump on tenant but i think this is really important for you to understand sirisha yes you know Uh, how exactly you know it module works right for time tracking to you know have a good configuration or information mm-hmm. you know you can you can have you know uh, you know inputs from you know uh, hcm right mm-hmm. it drives a lot of things and uh, from hcm side of things you know in terms of eligibilities you know you can think of time tracking as a module where it is more of a receiver of information right so imagine time tracking on one side of a room and you know it seems sending a lot of information to that you know to drive the eligibility is to drive a lot of things mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. now talking to payroll because you were interested on in that part of things right how payroll works mm-hmm. specifically right uh, with mm-hmm. with time tracking mm-hmm. so obviously payroll from your journey of sap as well sirisha let me ask a question how exactly you know what would be the flow for an employee <clears throat> because i want it to be a dialogue so that i understand that how much you are grasping as well accordingly i can tone down my uh, you know pace and you know complexity as well so let's talk about work day uh, payroll or sap payroll for example how exactly would a person get paid right let's talk about that can you can you probably share your input you know thought process between sap modules how the information would be flowing so in general uh, certain uh, like uh, hr uh, data needs to be uh, needed for processing payroll like employee details and then uh, mm-hmm. time data so for in few instances uh, time is already evaluated out of the system so the, in that scenarios the time integration need to be done with an excel system mm-hmm. in some instances we just get uh, the raw data like absences and attendances and the time needs to be evaluated in the system so once we have the time info information um then like all the basic earnings deductions or mm-hmm. employee salary those kind of mm-hmm. components need to be set up so then once the payroll is triggered so obviously like um like all your gross net calculation mm-hmm. done okay along with benefits and garnishment uh, details awesome in simple terms totally agree with that in simple terms within within work day right let's let's look at someone you know uh, let's look at employee journey right mm-hmm. let's say i am joining your team you know i am joining uh, your location let's say or i am joining from you know any other location as well let's say i am an employee based out in you know uh, china okay mm-hmm. so i join in in the company the first module where i'll be interacting indirectly or directly would be the hcm where it will talk about my home location it will talk about my office location it will talk about my job profiles it will talk about my address if it will talk about my emergency contacts it will talk about you know my overall manager name 
it will talk about my uh, unit name it will talk about my co-workers it will talk about my compensation you know indirectly indirectly right mm -hmm. it will talk about my job profile as well now mm -hmm. as an employee you know as raj joining the china office right mm -hmm. i am a time tracking employee okay i need to log in and log out Mm -hmm. to drive my eligibility to be eligible for that you know the information would be flowing from hcm right my employee type is really important my location mm -hmm. would be really important and my job profile would be important it won't be like that you know every china employee in that location would be logging time there would be certain managers certain directors certain people who are not even logging right uh, obviously mm -hmm. they don't need to because of their job profiles so time tracking is one now i being an employee is you know uh, getting certain paid time offs or absences and certain unpaid ones as well let's say i get you know for first year i don't get anything from the company right only after first year i'll get something and let's say as an employee i need to take an urgent emergency you know absence for two days i won't be available for next week let's say right mm -hmm. so that also a key factor okay so there are two parts of it now number one time tracking so let's say for the first week i'm working from monday to friday logging hours and next week i am you know uh, taking two days off and next three days i'm working right mm -hmm. got it and let's mm -hmm. say it is the end of the month i am getting paid you know china being a monthly one let's say i'm mm -hmm. getting paid now for workday payroll to receive information there are there would be at least two factors here number mm -hmm. one you know on the absence that i am taking two days extra which ideally i should have you know worked on but i was unable to then those two days salary would be reduced you know prorated ideally right. i i should be paid for 10 days considering you know 10 working days in two weeks but i will be paid only for how many days eight days awesome now in eight days there would be certain times where you know i'm required to work for 8 hours you know mm -hmm. within 8 hours let's say on my first day i was very excited as an uh, employee mm -hmm. and i work for 12 hours right okay mm -hmm. then you you should have a logic you know then as a time tracking configuration if the employee works extra how they will be paid will they be paid you know certain dollars to it or they are just expected to work for 8 hours or there would be certain rules to it you know all those things all those things are handled within time tracking you know if you are paid less as well for, for example if the employee is taking a half day or employee is working just for 6 hours how exactly it will be paid you know how about the employee meal breaks in between how exactly employee would be paid all that logic all that you know uh, information in the background is configured in time tracking okay. module understood Right. Again, like usually, like it depends upon the employee, like whether it's an exempt or non-exempt, right? So based Correct. on the employee, and also be, uh, depends upon the work location. If it's a California, like it's a different time of uh, type of calculation. Exactly, right. exactly. California state law will come into the picture where you know uh, certain meal breaks would be required. You know, uh, let's say, uh, you know. Germany has certain rules to it, you know, female employees need to take this much break, you know, certain employees need to take this much break as well. Uh, uh, so all these things are kind of driven, but you know, uh, you should not look at exempt and non exempt, you know, that is very much US specific, that is true. And obviously, that mm -hmm. is a factor. But it could be as simple as, you know, someone working in China office of this location, having this job profile are eligible for time tracking. So okay. it is very much customizable. It cannot. It can be driven based on you know, as simple as you know, someone working from this location altogether, or someone falling under this job profile, right? Mm -hmm. So all these things can be you know. It is very, I would say, flexible in terms of driving that, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Now finally, this employee getting paid for ten days. Coming to our example, right? So there are two mm -hmm. contributing factors to it. Number one, obviously, the absence part of things. Number mm -hmm. two is time tracking. Number three, let's talk about number three now. Not about, you know, you don't have to look at the slides. Number three would be, you know, let's say the employee was, you know, joining on a holiday, right? So for holiday, employee will be paid or not, right? That is also a consideration. Holiday 
which is work day, you know, holidays and calendars, right? Depending on the location, it, it is also connected to time tracking. So now, you know, three things are surely connected to time tracking. One is HCM, one is absence, you know, one is obviously payroll. And obviously one of the components, which is there connected to all this is work day calendars, you know, holidays, public holidays, the overall calendar, which you put in, right? Mm -hmm. Jordan. Okay. Perfect. Now there is something called period schedules as well. Uh, which we'll talk more about in the system, but you know, there is something called period schedule and work schedule. Just imagine this as, you know, someone like a rotation system as an employee, if you are expected to work Monday to Friday, nine to five, right. That is logged in that uh, work schedule. And if there is some pattern to it, you know, every third Friday, you'll be working for, you know, one hour late or on the night shift, all those things are logged in that as well. So if you see Sirisha, everything is interconnected. You know, the work pattern of the employee is interconnected. The holidays are interconnected. Absence is interconnected. Payroll is interconnected and obviously HCM, right? You understood the work schedule part of things as well, right? Which we'll talk more, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Because an employee, if let's say the employee schedule tells the employee to work at nine to six, right? And mm -hmm. there is a change to it, you know, every last, you know, last week of the month, the employee has to work on a night shift, let's say. So mm -hmm. depending on that, every rule will be driven as well. Right, right. All your schedule, your day offs, your holidays, everything will be assigned to the work schedule. Correct, correct. And as we talk more about it, think of, more, I'll probably give you one thing to think about it. Someone mm -hmm. working on a night schedule, right? And obviously mm -hmm. there would be midnight, you know, there would be day change. So there are additional complexities added on top of that. So you have to think oh. about that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. As we talk more about the config in future, it would be more when, uh, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we'll talk more about it and we'll do hands-on. We can talk more about that, but mm -hmm. in simple terms, uh, you know, workday projects is also one of the modules, which is primarily driven, you know, more for, you know, project side of things where employee log their hours based on certain activity, you know, mm -hmm. let's say there are a team of consultants in the team and they need to log hours based on certain activities. So they use workday work projects. But work day projects is nothing but very much closely connected to time tracking. It has mm -hmm. additional features as well, which are more towards, you know, budgeting and, you know, logging the overall estimate of employees and how much is, you know, the billing and everything, but you don't have to worry too much about it. First we'll cover, you know, the objective of this training is more towards time tracking, but as you learn time tracking, it would be very easy to understand the interconnection part of things as well. So work day projects is something similar to employee self service. No. So workday projects, if I tell you in simple terms, you know, workday projects is a capability where you can drive a project within workday. For example, you can log hours, you know, how this hour, which is logged is linked to certain activity, those kind of things. As a manager, imagine you are driving a project. There are 20 employees who are working for a certain project, right? For each and every type of activity, they can log their hours on in a day. So it is an enhancement on top of time tracking. Obviously it would be an ESS capability, but it would be even an MSS capability as well. So every capability has two parts of it, obviously, which is employees self, right? Employee self-service and manager self-service, but there would be admin, admin part of things as well. So workday projects is more towards, you know, even though employees can log data and log out, you know, information based on certain activities, but this would be more on, uh, you know, how the admins look at the data and how admins, you know, kind of drive, you know, certain decisions on top of that. Right. And we can talk more workday projects in simple terms is just a way of capturing time in a more meaningful way, in a more, uh, I would say organized way and very direct way. Let me give you an example for that time tracking. You are just entering hour from nine to six. You don't have to worry that what all activity you did, right? You're just logging in an employee of, uh, you know, organization workday projects would have certain additional pointers to it, where you have to log in hours based on certain activity. And that would be used for further reporting and, you know, tracking purposes. Okay. Sirisha, you understood this one. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sure. All right. Uh, yeah. So like, like I said, right. It is more of an end to end experience, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, this, this capability of time tracking, right. 
I'm sure you are aware that time tracking being being a module can be used on obviously web browser. You can web log in on the web browser as well. You can use your mobile phones as well to log your hours. You know, if the mobile time tracking is enabled. And mm -hmm. finally, a time time clock. You know, where you know in your office gates there will be swipe in, swipe out, and you know it is indirectly logging the information and sending it to uh, work day. The last one from time tracking side of things. Imagine so first one and the second one is clear, right? Web and mobile. It is obviously work day. It would be directly receiving the information, right? Mm -hmm. On the third one, which is physical clock, right? Which is swipe in and swipe out in offices, right? Certain Kaaba clocks are there, certain different type of clocks are there. But those are kind of, you know, uh, I would say in simple terms, storing that information and sending it to work day system using a certain integration which are time clock integrations, which are, you know, basically all the information of swipe in and swipe out is given as input to workday and then the processing of that data happens. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yes. Hope this, uh, you know, the basic overview is clear to you, Sirisha, right? Uh, Pushpa, anything to add on top of that? Uh, just wanted your, you know, your thoughts as well, so that it would be useful for Sirisha. Yeah, that is, uh... Yeah, it's a great explanation. So the basic is, yeah, it is very important to understand the basic. You have covered well on the workday time tracking side. Um, so uh, workday, how it works is workday it has a single user experience and single global plat platform. And the, there is a single source of truth where we are managing the employee data, we are collecting the employee data, and then we the employee schedule will be assigned automatically. Let's say the employee is working on any particular shift, like morning shift or evening shift or afternoon shift. So depending on the employee working schedule, so it will be auto schedule uh, in workday. And also it track the time. So the employee will have the capability to go log in, like check in and check out. So the employee will have a very, a uh, single user experience for the tracking of the data, uh, for tracking of the data, like to check in, check in and check out time for the hourly employees. And also it manages the absence. Let's say if any employee is taken, has taken any paid time off or employee has taken any sick time off. Okay, so we'll, the time tracking tool, it also track the absence for any employee. Okay, let's say in a week, the employee is scheduled is, uh, let's say, eight hours in a particular set time, okay? And the, when the employee is taking any absence, so for that day, the employee will be getting paid, but the system will notice that, okay, the employee has taken the time off on a particular day, okay? So it is also very easy uh, in work day to track the data and they manage the absence, the schedule will be assigned, and then the data, the final data will be sending over to the payroll for the processing. Okay. So why we are why we are tracking the time? So ultimately, when we are tracking the employee uh, working hours, so there is I mean that there is impact on the payroll. So employee will get paid accordingly based on the number of working hours. Let's say if employee is working on a overtime or if employee is working on any of the premium shift hours, right? Um, so for that, the data will be collected and then will be sending you over to the payroll, whether it is a workday payroll or it is a third party payroll. So there will be different system will be connected. So if it is a workday payroll within workday, this data will from the absence, the data will move over to the payroll. Um, but consider there is, uh, we are not using workday payroll and there is a third party payroll, like we have the ADP or ENY or any other uh, payroll vendor, right? So the workday will be connected via our integrations and from workday, there will be, this data will be sending over via integrations to the outside of the payroll, which is our ADP system or any other vendor the organization is using for. So this is how is the workday concept, like workday time tracking uh, concept is, the workday time tracking is managed from end to end, entire system 
in a single uh, platform where it is easy to collect the data and process the time tracking, uh, time hours, schedule hours, and then process it to payload for further processing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Uh, Thanks, Pushpa. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, Sirisha, are you aware of uh, integration as such? What exactly workday integrations mean versus uh, typical tech work? Are you aware of workday integrations, how exactly it works? I mean, I have little idea, but no. I mean, yeah. I, I just have like little or, um, oral idea. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, for time tracking and understanding, that would be basic. I believe we can talk, uh, you know, I can probably talk about it as well so that, you know, you can understand. And uh, thanks, Pushpa, for bringing that as, up as well. It won't be a case where, you know, you are always using Workday payroll as well, right? You might have to send information as well. Right, so right. We, we can talk about that specific scenario as well so that you understand more from that perspective. There mm -hmm. would be certain connections which are very, uh, you know, unique in a way as well. Uh, but right now, since since we are going uh, for the first session, how exactly are you liking the pace? Or do you want uh, me to keep it slower or a bit faster? Or you like more examples? How exactly it is for you uh, till now in terms of understanding the basics? I think the pace is good, Raj. Let's go like this. So yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to like relate my understanding with overall time and payroll process so yeah i mean i think we are good at going in good space and we covered like most of the high level aspects sure sure uh, the reason why i'm uh, asking this is because uh, you know uh, i we could have probably uh, approached this slide in a very different fashion where you know we are not talking a lot about it but i think mm -hmm. considering your experience since you know hcm right and uh, mm -hmm. then since you have not worked on any other module as such right so mm -hmm. that's where I'm trying to, you know, uh, give you a whole more holistic picture because no module in this uh, ecosystem would work separately that you can tell, okay, I work in time tracking without HCM basic knowledge, without it, the overall basic knowledge, it would be next to impossible to work on that as well. So that's where I'm focusing more on foundation part of things as well. So probably first two class, especially first today, today's class, as well as tomorrow's class, what uh, we will do is, you know, talk more about the basics because, uh, you know, the system configuration is one part, but understanding how exactly it works is another part as well. Right. So it should not be the case to give you an example that, you know, someone is changing a configuration, but not understanding the impact of it. Right. Uh, because impact can be huge end to end, you know, so that, that is also a consideration. In terms of uh, one of the key things, which I will talk more about is on the touch point side of things as well. Right. And you know, how exactly it talks uh, to different modules, but before that, you know, considering we are talking from more than I think uh, almost 50 minutes now, uh, let's take a break in between uh, for a quick five minutes, quick bio break uh, so that, you know, uh, we can be more recharged and, you know, uh, you know, start the session again. We can keep the session on for the time being. Let's take a five minute bio break and let's reconnect again. Uh, that's fine for you, Pushpa and Sirisha, right? Sure, guys. Yes. Awesome. Um, so, Sirisha, one of the pointers which we were talking, right, uh, was more about integrations, right, which uh, Pushpa as well mentioned that, you know, there could be certain scenarios where we are not using uh, Workday payroll as a module, right? Mm -hmm. or workday benefits as a module or you know you are not utilizing workday capability completely and i'm sure in your previous experience as well uh, sap being a strong module obviously sap is very robust on the payroll side of things as well but not everyone uses uh, you know every module of the same hcm suit there are companies which will prefer you know having hcm of sap time tracking of Kronos, payroll of a certain vendor, right? So I'm sure you must have heard about Kronos as well, which are, you know, into time tracking. They are specialized into time tracking solutions, right? So these systems should be interconnected, right? That is one of the key things, which, uh, which you should think that how these systems talk to each other, right? For example, your company might be using Workday, but you'd be paid out by, let's say, certain vendor, right? So how this information is going from Workday 
to that one vendor that's where i think uh, the whole integrations piece comes into the picture right and workday being an hcm system you'd have a certain other systems as well where you might need to send information right for example you your company might be using a reporting tool or your company might be using certain tools where you need information coming in from workday right some report should be there from a legal standpoint uh, you were talking about california right sirisha so for california state let's say there is some rule that on a every quarter basis the organization has to provide the list of employees working you know more than 45 hours per week right so there should be certain output file which is going from workday system to a specific system where it is being received you know by output i mean it can be an excel file it can be an automated generated file it can be a scheduled run as well so there are a lot of parts of it right there could be certain bad jobs as well which i'm to, uh, using workday uh, i'm using sap terms for you so that it is easier to understand so there could be certain bad jobs as well which are running on a quarterly basis on a monthly basis to send this information right so sirisha hope you are understanding right uh, mm -hmm. if you have any questions uh, feel free to interrupt yeah yeah sure yeah so all these functional modules as such if you see hcm workday payroll absence management projects you know compensation absence you know recruiting all these different modules talk to each other but in terms of talking since they if we are using workday time tracking only right if you are using just workday time tracking these modules talk to each other using standard logic you don't have to worry too much you don't have to do anything extra as such to convey information right mm -hmm. but if you see you have a certain system which is outside the workday scope of things right you need to send that information that's where workday integrations come into the picture workday integrations are nothing but you know certain lines of codes where you are extracting the information from workday system and sending it outside number one or you are receiving the information from a certain system for example let's say you are using time clocks right you are mm -hmm. not using employees are not logging their hours on workday system or on their mobile devices they are using a certain clock they are going to office imagine a production company you know you are building cars and uh, you know employees workers join at 9 am and leave at 9 pm it's say 12 hour shift for them production shift they don't use systems they don't use mobiles they don't have those configurations and the company wants their physical presence to that factory right that organization that's where a physical time clock will receive the information and in terms of receiving you know as soon as the information is received you know there would be certain logic to it where this information is sent to workday system right in terms mm -hmm. of workday system what connection do you need you would need an integration so anything outside the system you need to connect you would need an integration both as an input and output right imagine in simple terms imagine this being a water filter imagine workday being a water filter there would be an inlet pipe usually the raw water tap water you know and there would be an mm -hmm. output file which uh, output water which is a filtered water right so these two connections which are typically the pipes and all this plumbics and all right in terms of receiving the water as well as you know re releasing the water right those are integrations both input and output right so these mm -hmm. two systems connect to each other it is very simple for you to understand hopefully Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. and all the mechanism within water filter you know all these ma machines and you know the purification system all the logic that is workday system that is workday time tracking workday hcm workday absence management workday payroll anything you know so in simple terms that is the easiest way of understanding how integrations work in work into the picture right awesome uh mm -hmm. hope is hope it is uh, important uh, you know uh, it is clear to you reason being uh, within time tracking right like uh, pushpa as well mentioned right there would be certain scenarios where you are not using workday payroll or you are sending out information outside for processing right then that outside logic is done using the integrations only that outside logic is just the filtered water right which we are sending out 
to send out that filter water, we need a tap right from the filter. So that tap and that outlet is workday integrations. Receiving this workday and processing this workday time tracking information and sending out in the format which is accepted by the you know vendor or the third party system, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, let's move on and I'll probably uh, give, uh, you know, this one, you know, uh, probably push back and deep dive into it, you know, first in the, uh, and I can add on top of that. So push over to you. you, you can talk about, you know, the overall uh, cell service time entry, the different reasons of, you know, you know, how exactly workday consumer driven user experience uh, works. So push over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Raj. Yeah. So let's uh, now discuss more about like how it is, uh, how workday time tracking, how it improves the productivity for any organization and how is the uh, user experience, you know, that is, which is main, which is the, we have the, that there are a lot of HR applications, but how workday is a, awesome, like one of the good user experience application that, that will track the time. And it is a seamless time tracking system, like from the end to end, like when you consider about we are collecting the employee data and then we are processing it and then we are automating to the payment directly, the hours will be calculated and then it will process to the payroll, okay? So it is important, very much important to understand how the workday, in workday, how the time tracking, what are the options to enter time uh, in workday. So first, let's talk about um, the self-service time entry. So when we say the self-service time entry, so there are multiple ways to enter time in workday. Uh, one of the uh, options is the user will go to the workday tenant. So in workday for every system we call as like you say that SAP production, right? So here mm -hmm. in workday, we call it uh, as a tenant, okay? Like we call as a workday production tenant, then workday sandbox tenant, or if there are, let's say multiple uh, development tenant or UAD tenant. So what we call a system as a individual tenant in workday. So the employee can directly, uh, they can go log into the workday tenant and based on the employee security, right? So consider that uh, we, we have a, we are in a global organization, okay, and we have employees from different different um, country like U.S., India, and different geographic locations, right? So the employee will log into the workday browser, and uh, employee will based on the employee security. So the time tracking is a concept, right? Um, it also has like every country has their own a way of time tracking and it has their own legal laws and regulations, right? When you say that US, US, uh, sometime back you were talking about the California um, hourly employees, right? The exempt, non-exempt employee, okay? Mm -hmm. So that is very specific to the California as a state where we are legally the system, we have to build a system in a such a way that we are legally tracking time based on the US California level labor laws, okay? So, mm -hmm. the, uh, so that is one option is the employee will log into the system and then as a web browser. And then when the employee will be logging into the, that will be option called the time, right? So when the employee is going to the record the time, so if the employee is located in US and California, so based on the, calendar, there will be one calendar view is going to be pop up, like where it is totally configured based on the employee, where the employee is located, okay? So they consider the employee is working in California and belong to US. So immediately the tenant in the system, the all these, you know, the rules, the calculation, if the um, time sheet will appear based on the system that we have set up for that particular country, okay? So the employee will log into the web browser and then the employee will have a view called the uh, calendar view where the employee is going to enter the time. 
like it is um, more similar uh, to our SAP uh, system, right? In SAP, we have CATS, the cross application time sheet, where the employee can go and record the uh, time. Or there are any third party system, right? Where we are collecting the time data from a different system. And then that will be collected and then uh, entered into the workday. So similarly here it is like in SAP here in workday also, there are different way to log in the time. Okay. Um, and also there are options to log into the uh, employee can record the time using the mobile device. So when the employee is uh, logging into a mobile device, Again, the UI is going to be a little bit different than our Workday uh, web browser, but entire application, the functionality, everything is going to be remain same. Okay, we can uh, you know cover it more when we deep dive into the um, chapter again more detail, like when we log into the tenant. But for your right now, for you to understand, so employee can log in to the web browser as well as the employee can log in using the mobile devices, okay? And time can also be entered against the project. Let's say the employee is um, assigned to multiple projects, right? The employee based on the allocation. Let's say employee has assigned to project one, um, 50% and another project as project two as 50%, okay? So in work day, we can have options to track time based on the project the employees uh, assigned for, okay? And based on the task also, let's say if employee is attending any particular conference, um, then employee has the ability to record the time based on the you know conference or if they are going for uh, utilizing that time for any of the team event, also, there is like based on the different different task wise, the employee or the workday have the have option to record their time based on the task. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, it is very easy to access, easy to access in a calendar view. So when uh, we say the time entry, right, the time tracking. So the employee, whenever the employee is going to record any time. So immediately system will pop up a calendar view. It is based on a month daily or a weekly view. Okay. So in a week, again, in the system, there are different, like what could be your start of the week, how you want to, to configure in the system based on that, uh, your calendar will be up here, pop up. And for each day, you can see how much, uh, hour, how many hours the employee has logged in for and for which activity or for which tasks the employee is assigned to or which project the employee is assigned to, okay? And also the employee has the ability to update, let's say if employee has, uh, you know, uh, working on any different uh, kind of event, also they have the ability to write down, there will be a comment that employee is still while logging in the time, employee can also update the comment that, okay, for so-and-so activity, um, like for an ad hoc request, right? So for so-and-so activity, I was working for three to four hours during this time, let's say, um, the employee has the ability to record the comments also, okay? And uh, so this is all about the, um, self-service time entry, okay? Then how about the mobile and web time clock, okay? So when we, um, uh, and the employer will be uh, logging in the time using the mobile device, right? So there are multiple ways the employer can check in and check out, or they'll directly the employer have the ability to enter the number of hours worked in the system, okay? So when we uh, say the web time clock, check in and check out, right? So there will be an option called web clock. So when the employee will checking in, so it will automatically capture the um, geographical uh, location the employee is located in. Let's say when the employee is in QS, and then based on the system time, the employee check-in time, this system will capture the employee check-in time. 
okay and uh, similarly like let's say employee is going for taking any break in between or if employee is going for any meal break then also this system will capture this is the time like check out for a meal break and then the system will capture the time based on the different uh, location geographical location um, based on the user is located okay and uh, um, also uh, the work with automatic date and time stamp right which i was talking about the system will automatically capture the date and time stamp based on the system um, system time zone how it has been set up mm -hmm. and uh, so these are the uh, you know mobile uh, and web uh, time clock and uh, let's talk about the efficient uh, approvals right like whenever the employee is submitting any time of course there will be it will go for the manager for the approval and and it is depending on the organization how they wanted to keep the approval process let's say it should go to the manager's manager or um, it should go to the hr business partner or regional hr um, based on the particular uh, projects then the approval system can be built in worked in such a way that it will route for multiple level of approval too okay so manager uh, can initiate a mass approval let's say uh, there are uh, you know 20 or 30 reportees and uh, who have submitted the time right so and it is very difficult for a manager to so when the employees submit the time right it comes to the manager workday inbox so there is a concept called in workday um, every employee will have a dedicated notification alerts and the inbox item okay so whenever the uh, employee receive any kind of accent report from right let's say manager uh, when the employee submit then the manager will get a accent related uh, item right whether to approve or to reject or to send back or deny so these kind of uh, items are called let's say accent related item so it will come and sit in the workday inbox okay and uh, manager will have the ability to view that who is by one by one employee so whenever there are, let's say there are 20 hypothesis so immediately the manager will receive a workday inbox item so which talks about more about that okay say today um, let's say the employee submitted for a week so for a particular week at every each and every day the employee has entered how many hours of time uh, how many hours has been entered for which activity and for which work but if the employee has entered any time of okay this is my uh, report is and uh, here the employee has entered the time of so out of let's say for a weekly time seat out of five days the employee has worked for three days and two days the employee has taken the time off. so the employee will have uh, the manager is will have the visibility for a detailed visibility of what has been entered by what has been submitted by the employee so the manager either can go and then view to the each request and then approve one by one request or if employee uh, manager has any concern let's say no um i think the employee has not entered proper hours then the employee has um, the uh, you know the manager can uh, send back for correction or manager can reject deny the request also so this is like how the approval process the manager can do like for each single and sing, for each single uh, activity that the manager has received from an employee okay and also if there are more reports then it is very tedious to right? the manager has to go one by one click on one by one one by one the inbox item and then approve the request. So there is also a, something called the mass approvals, where the manager will perform certain tasks to access the mass approval, and uh, where the manager can see, okay, here is my these many reports. For this is the time period, let's say for 
1st of March to the uh, 15th of March, the employee has entered these many employees. This is the employee cost center, and these are the produce that employee uh, has been made, this has been entered, and this is the volume. So directly the manager can, easy way for the manager to mass approve all the entries, okay? Which is a seamless process for a manager. So the workday also support the mass approval uh, uh, in workday. And uh, also there are, uh, you know, the exception approval. Um, let's say, like in payroll, right? We have the um, pay period. So period started, period ended, and to log the payroll, let's say we have a particular payroll, period started, period ended, and we log the pay, uh, pay period. This is the day that we are going to log for a particular period, okay? So that the none of the employees can make any changes to their data for that particular period, okay? And then the payment will be processed. So similarly here also there is a time, um, that is a concept for the time block period, okay? So when the employee, there is a particular period is defined, let's say if it is a monthly or bi-weekly uh, pay period. So if the system based on the system conflict reasons, the, um, after the time lock in period, the employee cannot go and enter, uh, make any changes to the time entry, okay? Within that period, when the time period is open, the employee can go ahead and then make any changes how many times they may, they can go ahead and then submit the time. But once it is logged, then system will not allow to enter any time. But so let's say in case of any exception, let's say, okay, the employee has forgot to enter and submit any time, forgot to enter and submit any time, then the employee has gone ahead with the manager approval, like manually know here due to my some reason that I have not entered. Then there is also an exception that the, during that period, for that employee, the, pay, the time lock-in period can be changed. And then also the, um, um, the employee can go and enter the time, which is outside of your the time uh, lock-in period. And then it will go, once the employee submit, it, will, it goes for the approval, right? Mm -hmm. So this is how our um, work the, uh, uh, the self-service time entry and the employee can enter to the mobile and web time clock and how it is, you know, how the approval system happens in time tracking. Um, awesome. Yeah, Raj, you wanted awesome. to... Yes, uh, that's that's great, actually. So, Sirisha, do you have any questions? I wanted to add on a couple of pointers, but before that, do you have any questions, Sirisha? Uh, I think it was very detailed uh, explained. Do you have any questions in terms of you know, self-service time entry, uh, how exactly mobile and clock, uh, web time clock work, and, you know, what about the approvals and, you know, the thing about, you know, retro approvals, exceptions, and all that. Do you have any questions? Um, so, so it says, like, uh, they can enter on the mobile also, sir. So setting up for, for mobile, is there any special needs need to be done for uh, mobile? Yeah, you, yeah, exactly. So that's a, that's a good question, actually. Uh, so for mobile, obviously, you have to enable certain things, but everything, the logic which you created on the web version, right, will work on the mobile. Okay. There are additional capabilities as well, uh, which can be added, but obviously those, those would be specific to mobile. But from, from the experience of it, a lot of clients prefer it and a lot of clients do not prefer it. The clients which prefer all this would be clients mm -hmm. where, uh, you know, people are in sales. Right, they don't have to go into office and they're just logging their hours on mobile, right? But usually, if you see majority of the clients, majority of the people, majority of the users, they prefer using web version or the like clock version, right? Because either they have to come to office to swipe information or to swipe their cards and work, or they are coming to factory to work, or they are using their web versions, right? So if you see the current model of how the world it is being hybrid, right? So usually mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of prefer using, you know, uh, uh, the mobile versions as well. But but like like I said, it requires certain additional changes as well. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you have to enable it as well, but not not so much effort in comparison to what you will feel in uh, 
SAP, right? You might you might uh, get your Fury application created, or you know your have you have different type of mobile apps for different versions. It is all intuitive. It is all you know uh, reactive in nature. That depending on the screen, even if you open an iPad or a mobile or, or you know iPhone or an Android phone, everything would work pretty fine. Mm -hmm. yep. So very limited effort is required. But from a tech side, uh, you know certain aspects are there. Uh, not, nothing fancy, you know. Uh, it is more of an enabling it. If if I if if I answer in single word, we just have to enable it. Okay. And also, is there any specific configuration that needs to be done at the timesheet level? Because, um, like in SAP, we have a functionality like cats. So, do we have any like kind of setup that needs to be done at uh, for configuring the timesheets? Uh, no, no, no. So I get the question actually. Uh, so. So usually on the on the CATS configuration side, right? You usual uh, mm -hmm. cross application timesheets, right? Basically ensuring mm -hmm. that you know uh, the end to end happen from a mobile perspective. No, everything no. whatever you configure for the web version would work for the mobile version. Okay. Exceptions are there, which we'll talk more. But in general, you don't have to do anything extra. You just have to enable certain things, and then they mm -hmm. would work plug and play. You don't have to worry too much. So that's where if I see, if you compare from SAP, it is very fast in that, right? Okay. So in general, like clients, they have like specific requirements that the employee cannot go back like more than six months. So the timesheet should not like let the employee to go back after a certain like for period like to modify this timesheet. So those kind of, uh, I mean, things we can configure uh, here, right? Exactly. So like, like Pushpa mentioned, right. Uh, in terms of that, you know, if I talk about that, uh, just a second. Yeah. In terms of that, it depends on the pay period actually. So okay. let's, let's look at pay periods, right. Different pay periods are there where people work from, you know, uh, let's, let's talk about, about an employee who is getting paid monthly, right. Mm -hmm. You are paid for the Feb month already. If you are changing something, you are not allowed to change. So a lot of eligibility is driven using that, you know, it's, you don't have to do anything extra. It would be, you know, immediately only, you know, by default, it works on the pay period, but you can put additional validations as well. Usually mm -hmm. if you are paid for the previous month, you cannot change the data. That is how by default it works. Okay. How about like if the employee can go back until six months? No, you cannot. Technically you cannot. Until unless okay. you want an exception, but in general, no. Okay. 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 I'm good. I don't have any other questions. Okay. Perfect. I think, I think this is pretty much it, you know, in terms of basics, I think we have covered a lot of things today. I, like I said, right. I think the tomorrow session, we'll talk more about all these basics first. I know there are a couple of things which I want to cover on actionable reporting and the calculation part and this slide, which is really important. Why I'm mm -hmm. giving more time to the basics is, you know, because we have to look at, uh, you know, your mm -hmm. understanding of multiple modules talking to each other. So I think mm -hmm. in terms of covering the basics, I think we covered a lot uh, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, uh, pay periods. There are a couple of discussions pending, which I will take tomorrow. Mm -hmm. where you know we can talk about all these exceptions all these uh, things from an admin perspective and you know from a reporting standpoint for example like you said right how the six months if someone is going to enter uh, you know sometime back in time right how do we handle that and those type of scenarios because configuration as soon as we deep dive into configuration you have to look at the use cases as well right so you'll find while you know, as, as much as you start working on it and, uh, you know, in the upcoming sessions, you will realize a lot of things which you had to do in SAP, you know, extra or create a configuration of things. You don't mm -hmm. have to do a lot of things here. It's already provided. You know, there are certain features which are just by default assumed. For example, oh. if you are paid in the previous month, you know, ideally you cannot edit the information, you know, you are paid for that time already. So those kind of things we'll talk more about it but hope the session was good for you or in terms of understanding what I'll do immediately is mark your presence as well, because I need to track your presence in the session. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, tomorrow, same time as planned, we will talk more about it and tomorrow as well, we'll cover the basics as well. And my plan is from next week onwards, we'll start looking at the 10 and 10, the config, the overall setup part of things. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah.
yeah it's very informative raj i mean the, like you know for me also like i could recollect all the like the existing time process that i'm handling so sure. yeah it's very informative sure. fortunately i think based on our experience i think the good part is you know me and pushpa both have previously worked on scp uh, mm-hmm. i worked on success factors as well so i'm trying to relate it for you as well Okay. Uh, but but during an intro session as well, like I said, right? We should not relate it too much as well. Okay. Otherwise, you'll, you'll get confused. So assume right. it to be a fresh one. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. So we'll we'll meet tomorrow. Uh, let's end this session. Take rest. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of information as well. I don't want to you know over it over provide information which you are not able to grasp as well. So let's meet tomorrow and discuss further. Right? Okay. Okay. Pushpa, anything to add before we close in? Yeah, the same. Thanks, Ram. Yeah, we have covered enough the basics. So, Sirisa, you can just uh, you know go through the detail, and then um, we can again we can start from uh, tomorrow with some more uh, basic uh, of the time tracking, like how it has been done, and then we we'll proceed. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our Vimeo page and follow for more upcoming videos.